Hi everyone, Trump the gone, Tano here. T Trump, Trump's gone. The internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review <laughs> of this new Navy Blue project, Song of Sage post panic. This is the sophomore record of abstract hip hop artist Navy Blue, actually the second LP he dropped in 2020. This guy's been at it for a while now and not just in music. He has worked as a skateboarder, a producer, a model, while dropping numerous EPs along the progression of this past decade. But most were likely introduced to him through features on acclaimed projects from Earl and Mike. Now since then, Navy Blue has effectively become a part of this burgeoning trend of very low-key, minimal, contemplative hip-hop. With that being said, though, it's pretty apparent from the outset that Navy Blue isn't merely following an underground trend here, and seems to have a broader sense of abstract hip-hop than some of his contemporaries do. Take a look at the features, what few there are here to look at, for example. It's not often that you get a record with both Zero and Yasin Bey on it, aka Most Def. Navy's delivery on this record shows versatility and perspective too. Sometimes dishing out the deep, near-monotone flows of like a Mad Lib when he's not pitching his voice up for his Quasimodo stuff. And simultaneously, his confessional and despondent lyrics hit hard emotionally, like some of the darker moments in Mac Miller's discography. But what really makes Navy Blue transcend his influences on this project, as well as his less-than-engaging voice, his vocals don't exactly pop out of the mix a lot of the time, and intentionally so, is the fact that his writing here is so focused and successfully exercises some of the most negative internal emotions that he's dealing with from day to day. I think to put this album on and really listen to what Navy Blue is saying here is to feel his pain in an empathetic sense. There are 18 tracks on this thing and nearly all of them are backed with production that features a very simple, basic, straightforward, hypnotic, repetitive loops that forge a strong vibe, occasionally wavy, but doesn't really draw too much attention away from the lyricism, from the vocals. So whether or not these tracks work really hinges on Navy's ability to uh, provide thoughtful and engaging lyrics. The opener, Dreams of a Distant Journey, is sort of like a statement of self or statement of intent for this record, with Navy going into his origin story a little bit, his feelings about his relationships with his family, Family, really meditating on all of it in a way that clearly seems therapeutic, and while this is not one of my favorite tracks on the record, uh, this certainly sets a pace and a pattern for the rest of the album because, again, expect further tracks from here to undergo a similar feeling of, of, of processing. I much prefer the very pointed Tired, which is a song literally about feeling tired, feeling aggravated, feeling just drained due to all of these social ills, whether they be gentrification, police killings, a general lack of peace across the world. There's one bar where I believe Navy describes himself as a super empath in a way, which leads me to believe that uh, maybe as he's dealing with all of this, he's also taking on the emotions of others and trying to process that. The stress, the pain, the feelings of defeat that are expressed on this track I think are just all too relatable at the end of such an awful year. Memory Lane is another spacious atmospheric stunner where Navy essentially skates beautifully over these heavenly soft layers of vocals as well as glistening pianos. He delivers some sharp lyrical ideas on this track too, saying years on the earth, tears on the turf, blood on on the leaves as he continues to dive deeper into these themes of processing trauma, sorrow, and loss. He then finishes things off with a haunting refrain about our pandemic present. Step with me on this path, you gotta laugh, it's hell ridden, wear a mask, wash your hands, or fall victim, pick a casket, lay in it, the death wishes don't last. I was with Maxo is actually one of the few moments on this LP where the instrumental hits. It's like a hypnotic series of cat cascading bits of piano, horns, and what sounds like bells. This beat is like the soundtrack to crossing over into the spirit realm. The somewhat messy and surreal overdubbing on Maxo's voice here, I could really take or leave, but at least Navy's verse feels like it really has some urgency to it, commanding attention as he's dropping these abstract and pensive bars about money and finding peace, depression. The jazzy, tumbling guitar lines on Poderoso are a 
a little tedious, but at least Billy Wood's harrowing trademark delivery is a breath of fresh air, then the track Self Harm is an intriguing meditation on exactly that. With Navy taking into account all of these things that cause him pain and emotional anguish, and then giving in to this desire to self-harm in order to cope. There are even portions of this track where Navy vocally sounds like he is on the verge of an emotional breakdown. It's intense, to say the least. 1491 is one of the sharpest tracks on the entire record, backed with cinematic production from West Coast legend Evidence. The pitched vocal samples, vinyl crackle, and eerie horns wailing out into the beyond set a foundation for one of Navy's best verses. Unshaken on this track, he says, I used to Kiss My St. Christopher, Fuck Christopher Columbus, 1491, It's One and Done, This Shit is Fucked Up, Sitting in My Thoughts and Smoking Dolo on the Spot, So Many Photos on the Wall, At Most Times I Was Caught, In a Web That I Had Spun Myself, The Damage Did a Lot. Following this, Navy uses the track Breathe to simmer more on some of his emotional struggles, but maybe in a way that is a little too understated, although I will say it is a breath of fresh air to hear Yasin Bey go long on this one with a pretty robust verse and some melodic vocal leads too. Moving past the halfway point here, Sea Bass is actually one of the few moments on this LP where Navy seems to put his head in a more positive place. He's really living in an idyllic fantasy here, thinking about swimming, hanging with his girl. He's going to plant some fruit crops and stuff. This is genuinely one of the few hopeful moments on this project. Things get nostalgic on Aunt Jerry's Friday chicken where navy blue dives a little bit more into his feelings about his father and his similarities with him the memories of his dad sort of work as a recurring character throughout the entire lp but there was a line here that really stood out to me as he said caged in all my father's flaws is sitting handsome as if to say these problems these personality traits are just kind of unbothered existing cool they're there to stay in a way weirdly enough on the track back to basics Navy's delivery reminds me quite a bit of uh, Kaz, even the way that he uses space in between his bars, the cinematic and uh, very atmospheric production too helps. So yeah, this one is a little derivative, but I still think he uh, does the sound quite a bit of justice. Then there is the emotional wrecking ball that is the track alignment. Instrumentally, the track features these bare, icy, sustained chords and not much else. Meanwhile, lyrically, Navy shows himself to be a real poet. I am hanging on every bar that he says on this track. Whether he is hoping for better days or showing he's strong enough to stand in the face of future challenges. This reflective mood continues through the rest of the LP, and while the closers of the album may not finish things off in a climactic way, I guess it's almost fitting to uh, structure this record in a way where you could effectively loop it again and again and again forever and get this uniformly ruminating vibe going. Because because as I listen to this record, I get the feeling that Navy's struggle to process everything he is on this project is a never-ending one. That being said, though, there are some tracks on this thing I did find sort of underwhelming or even fleeting to the degree where they just lack any kind of memorability. I did think this hour-long project could have used a bit more variety along the track list, but I still enjoyed the record generally and see Navy Blue as one of the more standout artists to come out of this growing sound in hip-hop. I'm feeling a decent to strong seven on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Navy Blue, forever.